بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما okay so now in this section we'll try to get into ipsec iq2 so if you remember in the previous uh, ipsec vpn topics we have seen iq version 1 now that version 1 has been used for securing the vpn connections so we have discussed about the version 1 and already we have discussed a little bit more in detail like how the version one works the different phases like the phase one phase two and the messages exchange between the peers in the version one so probably in this section we'll try to get into the iq2 fundamentals and also we'll try to see the differences between the iq1 and iq2 the different versions and also we'll try to see the configuration differences what you will see when you are trying to implement the version 2 Ike. So let's get started here. So the first thing we need to know is Ike v2 is the next version of Ike v1. So we can say it is like the successor of the previous version. And this Ike version 2 probably have some more advanced and we can say like more advanced features as well as more secure than the previous version that is version 1. And again, uh, when you talk about the the functionality is still the same uh, why we use so it has most of the features of the ike v1 with some few enhancements now initially the ike v2 was defined in the rfc 4306 later on it has been updated in the different rfcs like 5996 and now the current rfcs which defines the ike version 2 will be like 7296 and 7247 and Ike V2, it was again developed by Microsoft and Cisco. They jointly developed this Ike V2 implementation. Now, what is the purpose? Again, the purpose remains the same, whether we are using Ike version two or Ike version one. So basically the, the way they work will be different, but the basic purpose remains the same. So what is the basic purpose here? To build a secure tunnels between the two pairs, and then while it is doing that, it also authenticate the peers different, using different authentication methods and then establish the security association and define what, what will be the encryption and the, and the hashing algorithms to be used to protect your traffic that is applying the IPsec between the two endpoints. So ensuring that the data is not seen by anyone that is providing the privacy with encryptions and integrity ensuring that the data is not modified by anyone so the basic purpose of the ike remains the same whether even in the version 2 as well but there are a few enhancements and the changes we have in the ike v2 so let's try to get into that so the first thing is it simplifies the security association and negotiation process the sa process as a negotiation process and enhances the efficiency now what this exactly mean is now this ike v2 probably have lesser number of messages so it, it uses somewhere around four messages when you compare with the previous version like in the ike v1 uh, we have something like different phases the phase one and the phase two and in the phase two again uh, phase one you have again uh, there are six messages it uses probably if you're using main mode or three messages it, if you're using aggressive mode and then in the phase two there are three messages so if you just go with a normal ike there will be around six or nine messages but whereas in the ike v2 probably these all messages are actually combined in the four so which means the negotiation process is going to be more uh, simple and it has been enhanced uh, we'll try to see that messages probably in our next topics and the next thing, uh, Ike v2 runs over UDP, same like Ike v1, so there's no difference. And it uses UDP port number 500, which is something by default, and uses 4500 if there is a NAT transfer. Set. Nothing but if there is any uh, device which is doing translation, maybe a service portal, it changes to port number 4500. So these are the default ports. So the default port used by Ike v2 again, same like Ike v1. Now one more change is it is more resistant to DOS attacks. Now, now basically the Ike V2 have some, it includes some methods which can detect if there is any kind of DOS attacks. 
and also it provides some some advanced authentication improved peer validation means uh, it has some additional enhancements in the authentication process like one example we can say there is something called asymmetric authentication where uh, one side i can use the uh, the signature the certificates and the other side i can use the pre shared key or i can use pre shared key on both the sides but i can use different keys and also it supports something called eap based authentication extensible authentication protocol i'll i'll try to get into that in our next topics probably more in detail on that so it has some more advanced authentication methods we can say like improved uh, peer validation methods and also it includes some of the uh, algorithms like the cryptographic algorithms which uh, overcome most of the loopholes what you we used to have in the previous version so in simple words we can say it has improved security and it overcomes most of the loopholes what we used to have in the previous version that is i v1 now the next thing we also have something called inbuilt uh, inbuilt uh, built in checkup for the tunnel now this is typically like one once we establish the tunnel between the two endpoints like if you if you go with the ic v1 so ic v1 by default there is no mechanism to detect whether the remote peer or this tunnel end is up or not so let's say if there is any problem on the remote peer probably there is no key pillar mechanism uh, in general there is a there is no key pillar inbuilt mechanism so what you can do is there is an additional configuration what you can do is you can configure something called dead peer detection uh, is a kind of an additional enhancement or some additional configuration you can add to support uh, to to ensure that if the peer goes down you you get an update so you you will be updated on the other side but again in in the case of ic v2 we have this inbuilt feature now inbuilt feature means uh, if there is any problem on the remote tunnel probably the the remote peer is going to come to know if the if, if it detects any kind of uh, tunnel disconnection due to some problem so so it is going to ensure that the peer exists the neighbor exists uh, at regular intervals it is going to send out some messages the key pillar messages to check the liveliness of that particular uh, peer so we have this feature inbuilt in the ic ic v2 here now finally one more thing we need to know is ic v2 is not backward compatible with ic v1 now what this means is you cannot go and say i'll run ic v1 here and i want ic v2 to run on the other side and expect them to interoper interoperate between them because the ic v2 is completely a new update to the existing ic v1 and majorly it was introduced to overcome some of the security limitations some of the loopholes in that so if you if you go and uh, use with ic v1 again you may you may end up uh, getting into those loopholes like you can you may those security uh, holes probably the security issues you may you may come up with so that's the reason uh, it's not backward compatible it's completely a new version with more security enhancements and that's the reason it is not uh, compatible with each other so when you decide to go with ic v2 you need to make sure that you are using ic v2 on every device for for securing the uh, traffic especially the vpn traffic here 